Hey guys, today I want to give you an overview and introduction to my modern OpenGL C++ application with an IMGUI docking integration. So let's start here right from Visual Studio 2019. You see the application has a scene view to display 3D content and the properties panel on the left side with an open button so that we can open a file dialog and load models for instance as OBJ or FBX. This cube is made with Blender and I use a simple PBR shader here, for that you can define the color, the albedo, with the color wheel that comes with IMGUI. And with the sliders you can set values for roughness and metallic. We can zoom and rotate by using a scene camera and set the position of a directional light. This is all implemented using GLSL, vertex and fragment shaders. These panels here can be docked, which is a part of the IMGUI framework implemented in the docking branch that I'm using. And you see it is resizing the content nicely. You can dock the panels left, right, wherever you like. We can also load OBJ files. Here are the default Blender Icosphere that are exported as OBJ with the flat shading but many other formats are supported by the library that I'm using, which is asimp, I'll show this in a moment. So this is basically what the application does in the current state, you can get it from my GitHub. The title is still misleading because the goal is to create a kind of template for 3D applications, but when it is more stable, I will add it to a new repository. At the moment I have no pre-make or cmake, third-party libs and headers are included, but I will add git submodules for future versions. I'm using these third-party libraries glue for the OpenGL extensions, glfw for creating the window, glm for 3D math and imgui for the user interface. And the lib as imp is used to load 3D meshes. So let me show you for which parts the libraries are used. For the window, as I mentioned, glfw is a great solution. Then we have imgui for the nice widgets and the docking interface. And the main content is at the moment OpenGL and as I mentioned asimp is used to import meshes in different formats. I created a playlist to get started with OpenGL that is added to the description and this part here I included as well. Ok, so let's have a look at the source code here in Visual Studio 2019. Like every C++ program, it starts here in the main function. As a title, I use jmeshbox, <laughs> why not? And yeah, I'm creating an instance of an application class as a starting point. This has a member of the so-called GL window, which is the main window. And it has a loop method that, you guess it, is looping as long as the isRunning method of the window returns true. Inside of this loop, we call the method render of the window. So what is rendered? Let's have a look. We have two render contexts. The first one is for the OpenGL content and the other one for the UI widgets that are rendered with IMGUI. Then we have a scene view for the main content and the property panel for the light and the colors. And then we have some post render steps like swapping, the buffers and then a method to handle the user input, for example to rotate or zoom the camera. Ok, let's have a look at these two contexts. They are derived from a class called RenderContext, just to have a common interface and I would say we start the application in the debugger just to see what happens there. Ok, I set a breakpoint here in the render method and we can start the local debugger to start the application and step through the code. Ok, we are inside of the render method, now the pre-render of the render context is called. Here we set the size of the viewport and clear it with a certain color, which is a dark grey tone. And then we call pre-render of the UI context and here we create a new OpenGL IMGUI frame and the doc space for the docking setup, which has to be done before any other IMGUI window is created. Ok, that's it, now we go ahead and render the scene view. This is also an IMGUI window, but it has to contain the main OpenGL content that we are rendering. So what we have to do after we use the shader and update the values for the light, we have to bind a frame buffer, 
so that we can render the OpenGL content into this buffer. So we clear again the viewport, then render the mesh if it is loaded. At the moment it is empty, so we don't render anything. Then we unbind the frame buffer and use I'm GUI again to create the scene view and that we are going to display an image. So we have to get the available size of this content region of the scene view. Then we set the aspect ratio of the camera to the content area so that the camera is adjusted to this content because it is just a part of the main window. I will explain this in special tutorials. What we are doing here is setting uniforms of the shader to adjust the view of the camera to the scene. Okay, as I said, we are going to display an image in the scene view and this is the texture that we rendered to the frame buffer. Okay, now we are rendering the properties panel. Here we are using IMGUI to create some widgets. For instance, the button to open the file dialog to select meshes to load, the color picker or sliders. Very straightforward stuff, but I will create a separate tutorial for it. Okay, then comes the post render where I'm GUI is flushing the content. So post render is a bit misleading. This is really the rendering of I'm GUI. And in the post render method of the OpenGL context, we are swapping the buffers. All right, then comes handling the input when the user is pressing some keys like your W and S. And here I call the same method as when the mouse wheel is moved and the camera is zoomed. And here's the real mouse move method. Here we get the X and Y position of the cursor and I check which mouse button is pressed at the moment. This is given to the scene view which has a camera that handles the input. Yeah, and that's it. And this loop is running and running. We are always rendering. I press F5 now to continue and remove the breakpoints so that the application is visible. And then we are going to press the open button and load a mesh. I added a breakpoint to this method where the mesh is loaded so that we can see how the asymp importer works and how we can fill the mesh with vertices. Okay, so I press open, select the mesh and the asymp importer uses the file path to read the model. It returns an instance of a scene class that could contain more than one mesh. So we check if there are meshes loaded by using the method has meshes. Perhaps there's already a mesh loaded so we are clearing the arrays for the vertices and then we are iterating the vertices and normals that could be found in the mesh and add these to the arrays of our mesh class. We are not only storing vertices, which are the points of the mesh in 3D space, we are also adding so-called indices. This is just an optimization technique for reusing vertices. I will explain it in a separate tutorial. Once the mesh is loaded, the vertices and indices are stored, a call init of the mesh in which the OpenGL vertex and index buffers are created. After creating the buffers, we give the vertices and indices to these buffers and then in the draw method, we can bind these buffers, we can use them and then finally draw the mesh. Then we again unbind the buffers and this is one draw call. Okay, and this is an overview for the application. And of course the question is, where do we go from here? We can create an application for retopology, for painting, many possibilities. I have to think about it, but anyway I will create a separate repository for that. And then we can do some special tutorials, for instance for I'm GUI, for shaders and how to program shaders. I think I will do a poll for that. As I said, I will create private repositories and you can access these. If you become a patron, the minimum is the golden card, which is quite affordable. I will add special repos for OpenGL, C++, Blender add-ons and many more. But you know, this is time consuming and I need some support for that. Another option is to join as a member and you get the same perks and benefits. And I will grant you access also to my projects on Gumroad. So guys, I hope you like this content. If you do, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And also follow me on my social media on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. If you have any questions, add these to the comments and I'll try to answer these as best and soon as I can.
Thanks for watching and I see you here on JNM.